A bit about where this is being held. This is the O'Neill State Armory, named after, I believe, our 84th governor, William O'Neill, who died just about 10 years ago. This was christened back in 1909. It was such a big deal at the time that uh, William Taft, the president, came here. Um, Let's listen in. I may not have been right. lucky this enough. This is Annie Lamont, Lamont, the first lady. Please listen in. But I am grateful that I came to Connecticut 25 years ago. I met my amazing husband here. We raised our three incredible children here, and I started my business here. The added bonus was that I was able to be near my great college friend, Chase Theodora Rogers, the retired Supreme Chief Justice of the Supreme Court of Connecticut. And how incredible that as a Connecticut legend and our great friend, she is now doing us the honor of swearing in the next governor of Connecticut, my husband, Ned Lamont. The Honorable Chase Rogers. Please raise your right hand. Do you, Edward Minor Lamont, solemnly swear that you will support the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the State of Connecticut so long as you continue a citizen thereof and that you will faithfully discharge, according to law, the duties of the office of governor to the best of your abilities, so help you God. I do. Congratulations. How are we doing so far? So it's a journey, and I could not take one step of it without my family, starting with Annie. Emily, Lindsay, and Teddy. We look out for each other. We're in this together. And that's how I feel about the state of Connecticut, my extended family, and we're in this together. And that includes our freshly minted constitutional officers and Lieutenant Governor Susan Bysowitz. My hat's off to our legislative leaders. We've got some work to do together. You ready to get going? And our judicial leaders, and in particular our great friend who has been fond of such wisdom and friendship for so many years, Chase Rogers. Chase. And I'm happy to join the Governor's Club. Uh, I'm proud you're here. Governor Weicker, Governor Rell, Governor Malloy, you've only been an ex-governor for about 30 seconds. <laughs> but you have something in common, and that's that you've been in the arena. And uh, to paraphrase my favorite president, Teddy Roosevelt, the credit belongs not to the critic on the sidelines, but to the men and women in the arena. And you've been in the arena, you know what it takes, and I'm proud to be following in your footsteps. And, and just a special shout out to Dan and Kathy. Um, Dan has done 30 years of service to our state as a mayor and as a governor, and you two could not have been more gracious and kind and helpful throughout this transition for Annie and me, and we thank you every day.
I'd also like to thank the men and women of the Connecticut National Guard for your assistance in helping us get this coordinated today and hosting us and what you do for our state every day. God bless you. And to Rabbi Goldman and Pastor Steele, Barrett Choir never disappoints, Pastor Steele. Reverend Allberg, you'll soon hear from Saud Anwar. These are great friends of different faiths. But just remember what we have in common in our com common humanity and what brings us together every day is so much bigger than anything that could divide us. And that's what I'll remind you every day as your governor. What? Where is Ralph sitting? He doesn't mention it, but when we were at the non-denominational Round Hill Community Church, uh, and he uh, welcomed Andy and me and another couple to the uh, church in very Republican Greenwich, as he pointed out. And he said, I'd like to introduce, you know, Alan. He's um, Lutheran. I'd like to introduce Carrie. She's a Greek Orthodox. And I'd like to introduce Annie. She's an Episcopalian. And I'd like to introduce Ned. He's a Democrat. <laughs> yeah, congregation thought that was pretty funny. <laughs> Okay, so from here, we're going to be marching over to the uh, state capitol. I'll be escorted by the governor's foot guard. A little history there, if you don't know it, but when uh, Jonathan Trumbull was uh, being inaugurated in, uh, I think it was 1756, he was being escorted by the militia, which were overserved and undertrained, and got a little rowdy on the way there. So thus, we created the governor's foot guard. For that, I thank you. And I'm also going to be escorted by a group that means something very special to me, and that is the Bridgeport Harding High School Marching Band. <laughs> I was a volunteer teacher there many years ago, and I remember each and every one of those kids like yesterday. And I am going to work every day as governor to give our kids and all of our kids the very, very best opportunity at the starting line of life and make sure this is going to be an amazing life for them, hopefully right here in the great state of Connecticut. And Susan and I were reminded of this just a few weeks ago when we joined a couple of thousand Connecticut high school students over at the Bushnell for a performance of Hamilton. And had a chance to talk to a bunch of the students beforehand and told them about my favorite song, My Shot, I'm Not Gonna Waste My Shot, where the young Alexander Hamilton sings about himself as a scrappy immigrant kid with great opportunities just like his new nation. And that's what I love about our country. Because every generation, we get an opportunity to reinvent ourselves. And every election represents a fresh start. And this is our chance to reinvent Connecticut. Think boldly, act boldly. That's what we mean to do for the next four years. So on election day, thousands of voters lined up, often waiting hours in the pouring rain. By the way, Denise, are we going to do something to speed up voting in this state? Come on. But they waited in the pouring rain because they believed and they knew that their vote can make a difference. And they were not going to throw away their shot, and neither are we. For generations, Connecticut was the most entrepreneurial, inventive, and fast-growing state located with amazing opportunities, and we still can be. But I will not allow our next four years to be defined by a fiscal crisis. Together, 
We are going to craft an honestly balanced budget, which does not borrow from the future, but invests in the future. We owe our kids, our extended family, nothing less. So, in a couple of hours, I'm going to speak to the legislature in the room where it happens. And I'll remind all of us that there's no room for the critic on the sidelines. It'll be easy to vote no, but let's give each other the benefit of the doubt. Let's leave our labels at the door. And let's work like heck to get the yes and make sure that all of our kids get their shot, okay? So thank you for your faith in me. I won't let you down. We won't let you down. And now let's get down to business. God bless the great state of Connecticut. So that